Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe my channel for the solution of such more problems. Now I am going to solve this particular problem which says the system of two blocks, cable and fixed pulley is initially at rest. Determine the horizontal force P necessary to cause motion when in part A P is applied to the 5 kg block and in part B the external force P is applied to the 10 kg block and it is said that determine the corresponding tension T in the cable for each case. Right, so in part A the external force is applied to this 5 kg block, right. So if I, if, if I consider this 5, 5 kg block as block 1 and this 10 kg block is block 2, right. So let me draw the free body diagram of these two blocks, right. So this is, this is our 5 kg block let's say and this is our 10 kg block let's say, right. So, if the external in part A, the external force is applied to this 5 kg block which I am representing it by block 1, right. So, the external force is acting at on this 5 kg block for part A, right. And if, if this is the external force P, so then what will happen is that the surface of this block 2 will apply the friction force on this block 1, right and that friction force will be acting in the opposite direction to this external force, right. So, that friction force will be acting in this direction, right. And let us say that this block 2 is applying the normal force on this block 1 in the upward direction, right. So, here we will have that normal reaction force and let us say that this normal reaction force is represented by N1, right. Let us say this is N1. Then the friction force will be equal to mu S N1 and the coefficient of static friction between these two surfaces is 0 0.50, right. So, we can say that this will be 0 0.50 and 1, right. So, the friction force here will be equal to 0 0.50 and 1, right. And similarly, since um, here we have that cable, right. So, if this P force is acting in this direction, so the tension in the cable will be acting in the opposite direction. So, we have to represent the tension force as well. So, here we will have that tension force T right and similarly if this P force is acting in this direction. So, then this tension force the cable will exert the force on this 10 kg block in in this direction that is towards the left right. So, we have to represent the T force here as well on this 10 kg block right. So, we will have the T force here as well right and similarly as a reaction this block 1 will apply the same N1 force on this block 2. So, I will have that same N1 force which will be acting vertically downward here as well right and if this T force is trying to move this block 2 towards the left. So, what will happen is that the friction force will be acting on this block 2 in the opposite direction to this tension which is the external force right and then this will be mu S times the N force and that N force will be the normal force applied by the horizontal surface on this block 2 right. Here this horizontal surface will apply the normal force on this 10 kg block as well right. So, let us say that normal force is N2 right. So, then here the friction force will be equal to 0 0.6 times N2, right. So, I will write that this is 0 0.60 N2, right. And similarly, if, if this block 2 is applying the friction force on this block 1, so as a reaction the same block 1 will apply the friction force on this block 2 as well and that friction force will be in the opposite direction to this friction, but it will have that same value, right. So, we will have the friction force which will be acting like this on this block 2 as well and it will be equal to 0 0.50 and 1, right. So, now for the first case, this is the first case, right. This is the part A of this problem, right. So, now if I say, if I consider block 1 which is 5 kg block, right. So, now if I apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0, right. Here we have to represent the weights of the both of these blocks as well, right. So, the weight of this block 1 will be acting vertically downward here, right and this weight will be equal to 5 times 9.81 and similarly the weight of this block 2 will be acting vertically downward here as well, right and that will be 10 times 9.81, right. So, now if I apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 since 
uh, we want to find the external force p just to impend just to start the motion right. So, just before starting the motion this whole system will be in equilibrium right. So, we have to apply the equilibrium conditions right. So, if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 for this block 1. So, we can say we can see that this n 1 is acting in the positive y direction if this is my coordinate system if this is my positive x and y direction then n 1 is acting in the positive y direction. This weight is acting in the downward uh, direction which is in the negative y direction. So, I have to write 5 into 9.81 and this will be equal to 0 right and we can say that n 1 is equal to the weight of block 1 which is 5 times 9.81. So, I will write 5 times 9.81 gives me 49.05 right. So, n 1 is 49.05 Newtons right this is n 1 right. Now, if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 to that block 1 to the uh, if we are considering the free body diagram of this block 1 then we can say we can see that this p force is acting in the positive x direction. So, I will write p minus this t which is acting in the negative x direction and minus this friction force which is acting in the negative direction and it is minus 0 0.50 and 1 and we know n 1 and 1 is 49.05. So, I will multiply this with 49.05 this is n 1 right and this is that 0 0.50 and 1 and this will be equal to 0. So, we can say that p minus t will be equal to 0 0.5 times this n 1 right. So, 0 0.5 times answer and this gives me 25 24.53 newtons 24.53 newtons and let us say this is our equation 1 right. Now, if I consider block 2 for equilibrium that is the 10 kg block. So, if I apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0. So, as we can see that this n 2 is acting in the positive y direction. So, I have to write n 2 minus this n 1 which is acting in the downward direction this is that same n 1 and n 1 is the 49.05 let me write n 1 right and then this weight is acting downward right. So, we have to write minus 10 into 9.81 and this is equal to 0. So, from this equation we can say that n 2 is equal to n 1 plus 10 into 9.81 and n 1 is equal to 49.05 right. So, this is 49.05 right. So, this means that in other words n 2 is equal to the summation of the weights of both the blocks right. So, this is 49.05 plus 10 into 9.81. This gives me 147.15. So, N2 is 147.15 Newtons. This is N2, right? Now, if I apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 to block 2, so as we can see that this T is acting in the negative x direction, so I will write minus T. This friction force is acting in the positive x direction, so I have to write plus 0 0.5 into n 1 right. So, we know n 1 which is 49.05 and this is this is also acting in the positive x direction. So, I have to write plus 0 0.60 and 2 and n 2 is this thing this is 147.15 and this is equal to 0 and if I bring this t to the other side of equation. So, it will become positive. So, t will be equal to the summation of both of these right. So, let me find it. So, this will be 0 0.5 times 49.05 plus 0 0.6 times 147.15. So, this gives me t equals to 112.82. So, t equals to 112.82 Newtons and if, if I put this t equals to this 112.82 in this equation 1. So, we will be able to that external force which is required right. So, we can write that p from equation 1 p is equal to if I bring this t to the other side of equation. So, we will have t plus 24.53. So, we have to add 
24.53 newtons to this T value, right? So, I can say that this is my answer. So, I will add 24.53 with my answer, right? So, this is 24.53 and this gives me 137.35 newtons. So, P equals to 137.35 newtons, right? So, so 137.35 newtons force is, is required to be applied to this 5 kg block if we want to impend the motion, right? For the first case. Now, for part B of this problem, the external force is applied to 10 kg block, right? So, if the external force is applied to the 10 kg block, then this P will be acting here, right? So, we will have that P force here. So, let me write that this is that P force, right? And if P force is acting in this direction, the external force is acting in this direction. So, the friction force will be acting in the opposite direction. So, we have to reverse the direction of the friction forces as well, right? We will have that friction force in this direction. And similarly, if, if, the, if the T force is acting in this direction, this is the only external force on this block 1. So, then this friction force will be acting in the opposite direction, right? Like this. And similarly, if this is the direction of uh, the friction force of this body 2 on this body 1, so, as a reaction, this body 1 will apply the same friction force on this body 2, but in the opposite direction to this one, right? So, we will have that friction force in this direction like this, right? And as we can see that the, the N1 and N2 direction will remain the same and the weights direction will remain the same since the weights are always acting in the downward direction. So, now from this we can say that for, for part B, N1 and N2 will remain the same. So, N1 will be 49.05 Newton and N2 will be equal to 147.15 Newton, right? So, we only need to apply the summation of forces along X for both the blocks, right? So, if I say for block 1, if I apply the summation of forces along X equals to 0, so, now as we can see this is our block 1 and this T is acting in the negative x direction. So, I will write minus T and this friction force is acting in the positive x direction. So, I have to write plus 0 0.50 and 1 and this will be equal to 0 or from this we can say if I bring this to the other side of equation. So, its sign will become negative or if I bring this T to the other side of equation. So, we can say that this T will be equal to 0 0.50 and 1, right? And, and we know N1, right? So, N1 is 49.05. So, this is 0 0.5 into 49.05. So, we will get T force for the second case. That is the tension in the cable for the second case, right? So, for the second case, the tension in the cable is very less, right? And that is equal to 24.53 Newtons, 24.53 Newtons. Similarly, for block 2, if I apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0. So, now as we can see that this P force is acting in the positive x direction. So, I will write P minus this T which is now known, right? Minus this, this friction and this friction, right? So, I will write minus 0 0.50 and 1 minus 0 0.60 and 2 and this is equal to 0, right? And since we are required to find this P force, then this P force will be equal to T plus 0 0.50 and 1 plus 0 0.60 and 2. And similarly, we can find it using calculator. So, this will be P is equal to T. So, for the second case, T is 24.53 from here, right? Plus 0 0.50 N1, right? So, N1 is 49.05 plus 0 0.60 N2, 0 0.60 N2 and N2 is 147.15, 147.15. So, this gives us that P force 137.345. So, we can say that 137.35. So, P equals to 137.35, right? So, from this analysis, we can say that if the external force is applied to block A or if the external force is applied to block B, the magnitude will remain the same to impend the motion, right? But the tension force varies, right? So, for, for the first case, the tension force value 
uh, the tension in the cable is 112.82 and for the second case the tension in the cable is 24.53. So, this is the solution of this particular problem kindly like my videos if you people think that they are helping you in your learning.